If you're hoping to be less dependent on glasses after cataract surgery, this video is for you. I'm going to be covering multifocal intraocular lens implants as well as toric multifocal intraocular lens implants for those with astigmatism, and I'll be talking about the pros and cons, and even at the end I'll do a brief overview of what other options are out there that can correct vision at multiple distances other than these multifocal lens implants. With modern technology, we have the power to correct vision in ways we never thought possible. Not only do we remove that blurry cataract, but we replace it with a lens in a pretty customizable way to get people the best possible vision after the surgery. The goal of a multifocal intraocular lens implant is to correct vision as best as possible at all distances. And this is accomplished by implanting a lens into each eye that has concentric circles of varying powers. The add power of the lens can vary as well, and that refers to the strength of the near portion of the lens. A low add power will give clear vision at near a little further out, whereas higher add powers in the lenses will give sharper vision at closer distances. Based on the conditions, like where a person is focusing, the lighting and the pupil size, a different part of the lens will be responsible for focusing the image. Now I know that might sound pretty complicated, but these lenses don't come with a user's manual. The brain learns how to adapt to this process and it happens usually a little faster than you might think. There are a variety of lens options out there that are designed a little bit differently, but rather than discussing the complexity of the optics of these lenses, I'd like to talk about how this group of multifocal intraocular lens implants function as a whole and what can be expected of the resulting vision. It's important to me to present lens options and other topics in a transparent way, where I'll talk about not only the benefits, but some of the possible drawbacks as well. And that's not to focus on the negative. Usually the drawbacks are fairly rare and success stories are more likely than not, but these are always things that we want to consider when we're making big decisions like this in regards to our healthcare. It remains true in medicine and in eye care that there is no perfect solution that fits every single person and works 100% of the time. So the potential benefits versus the potential drawbacks are really important to discuss with your personal eye care provider who's treating your condition and understands the full story of your eyes and overall health. There's a lot of nuance when it comes to choosing the right lens option, and it really depends on the individual's needs. We don't just work at distance and near anymore. In the past couple of decades, we have a lot more activities happening in that intermediate zone thanks to computers. And also keep in mind reading music or even just looking at a golf tee. So everyone is going to be a little bit different in what their needs are and that can change the lens chosen and the approach of the surgeon. It's pretty typical to choose the same multifocal lens add power for both eyes. And keep in mind that cataract surgery is usually done in one eye at a time. So it's pretty typical to have surgery in one eye and then experience that in the real world. And if somebody is happy with how their vision is, they're likely to get the same amount of ad power put into the second eye. And if they feel like they're lacking in that intermediate zone or in that near zone for reading, they may have a different ad power selected depending on what their needs are. And a mix and match approach could be an option in those cases. Keep in mind that with the multifocal intraocular lens implant, both eyes are being corrected for distance and intermediate and near, but if a different ad power is chosen between the two, one of the eyes will be slightly better at seeing near than the other, and that might help increase the range of the vision. They can also be used in a mixed modality situation where a multifocal lens implant is used in combination 
with a lens other than a multifocal lens implant, and I'll cover that more in a little bit. As you may notice, this has the potential to get complicated, and that's where a discussion with your eye care provider is going to be really helpful, sharing with them what your visual desires are, and they can take that along with their expertise to choose the best possible lens options for you. Determining if someone is a candidate for these lenses or if they have any contraindications to these lenses is a really important step to ensure the best possible visual result and to avoid any disappointment after the cataract procedure. First, let's talk about who could benefit from a multifocal intraocular lens implant. A good candidate is someone with overall healthy eyes and no significant ocular diagnoses. Also somebody who is looking to be less dependent on their glasses and have their vision corrected at all distances, distance, intermediate, and near ranges. It's also important for someone to be open-minded about the neuro adaptation that is involved. The optics of these lenses are very different from the natural lenses we have inside the eye. So it can take some getting used to, though most adapt to them pretty quickly. Finally, it's important for someone to have realistic expectations about the lenses and their vision after cataract surgery. There is always a chance that though vision will be corrected at all distances, it might not be that perfect 2020 at all distances. So if somebody is dead set on never wanting to wear glasses again, they may be disappointed that they might need glasses to get that extra line of visual acuity or that they might occasionally need reading glasses to read for long periods of time comfortably. I'm going to be talking more in the video about the pros and cons of these lenses. So if the cons seem like they would be really, really upsetting, that's something important to consider when making this decision. Also, a candidate should have the absence of any of the contraindications that I'm about to mention. Contraindications would include pre-existing ocular conditions that affect visual quality. The optics of these lenses in combination with a condition that causes reduced visual quality can make the visual quality even worse. And these would include things like macular degeneration, advanced glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy at an advanced stage typically, and corneal irregularities, which could include a history of LASIK or PRK. And that is something worth discussing with your doctor because that's not always an absolute, but definitely something worth considering and other conditions as well. Another potential contraindication could be pupils that are either too small or too large. Keep in mind these lenses function by the eye using different parts of the lenses to focus light at different distances. So if the pupil is too large and letting in too much light under some circumstances, or it's too small and it's not allowing the eye to view through the right part of the lens, then that could potentially be a problem. Finally, someone with very, very high unwavering expectations may want to avoid this lens implant because there is always a risk of glare or halos, which we'll discuss a little later. But if you're looking for perfect vision, no potential risk of side effects, you may not want to go this route. Let's talk about the benefits of a multifocal intraocular lens implant. So the clear benefit is that it offers clear vision at all distances, far, intermediate, and near. That means less dependence on glasses or contact lenses, and it also means potential savings down the line in the cost of glasses and contact lenses and contact lens fitting or what have you. Getting multifocal lens implants in each eye also maintains binocular vision. There are options out there that correct one eye for distance and the other for near, a perfectly viable option, but that can disrupt depth perception because the eyes are never focused at the exact same distance like they are with the multifocal lens implant. These lenses also offer convenience. There's no more switching between wearing different kinds of lenses depending on where you're looking or putting on your reading glasses. They generally correct vision at all distances. We'll go over some caveats there in just a moment. And there's also a potential for enhanced quality of life. 
being able to participate more easily in certain hobbies, sports, or activities without worrying about glasses or contact lens correction. I'm adding a new category here to the simple pros and cons list, and that's what I'm going to call the neutral category. And in this category is the occasional need for reading glasses for certain circumstances. With the multifocal intraocular lens implant, it does correct vision at all distances quite well, but there are some circumstances, particularly up close, where a boost may be helpful. Some examples of this would be reading in dim lighting. In this situation, the pupil is going to be large because of the dim lighting, but reading works best when the pupil is small, so having that extra boost will really help. Also, reading for long periods of time or doing very close detailed work may be more comfortable with some reading glasses. I consider this neutral rather than a con because if you were getting the typical monofocal lens that just corrects distance, you would definitely need reading glasses. And there are other ways to correct distance and near vision out there. And they also have the caveat of potentially needing reading glasses in some circumstances. So I consider this uh, pretty on par with the other options that are out there. Not really a negative, um, but something worth considering as well. Let's talk about some of the potential drawbacks to these lenses. There is the possibility that someone will experience glare or halos with these lenses, particularly in dim lighting situations. So this could affect night driving. That's something to think about. Also reading in dim situations like we were talking about. And this glare and halo effect happens because of the optics of the lens. Fortunately, most people tend to adapt to this over time with most reporting no issues at about a year after having the cataract surgery. There's also the potential for reduced contrast sensitivity, which is also more of an issue that occurs in dim lighting situations. And compared to a monofocal lens, which did not have any reduction in contrast sensitivity, there was reduction for the multifocal intraocular lens implant, but it still was within normal ranges. Contrast sensitivity refers to your ability to see a stimulus clearly compared to its background. So something that has high contrast is a black letter on a white background and things with lower contrast like maybe a more gray letter on an also gray background you're going to need good contrast sensitivity in order to see that there is no perfect lens that provides perfect vision at all distances without some potential downsides there's always going to be some sort of balance and compromise between range and quality of vision. A potential non-visual con to consider is the financial commitment. And that is because each of these lenses cost between one to $4,000 per eye, and that's not covered by insurance because these are considered advanced technology lenses, You know, not medically necessary to correct your vision because there are other options available, uh, but it could be worth the commitment. Well, as we talked about, the financial aspect is also on the pros column, and that is because you could potentially save a lot of money in the future, no longer needing to buy prescription glasses or contact lenses. If you have astigmatism, there are multifocal lens implants that correct for that as well. It would be completely pointless to correct your distance and near vision without correcting astigmatism because astigmatism affects the quality of your vision at all distances. So if you're getting a multifocal lens, you'd have to correct the astigmatism in one way or another. And I have a whole video about the options that are available to correct for astigmatism that you can check out as well. But in this case, we're talking about the multifocal toric intraocular lens implants, which have very similar pros and cons. The potential cons of glare, halos, and reduced contrast sensitivity are all quite similar. And it's just a matter of aligning the lens and getting really good pre-surgical measurements. And that is because with a typical multifocal intraocular lens implant, um, the insertion is a little bit more simple. You do need to make sure as the surgeon that the lens is nice and centered so that the optics work to their optimum. But in the toric case, you also have to make sure that it's rotated to the right location. And if that rotation is off a little bit, then the vision will be pretty far off and there will be residual astigmatism, which might require 
glasses or contacts or to go back in there and rotate the lens. You know, there are other ways to go about that. Um, but this is where really good surgical planning comes into play. If you've ever had a contact lens rotate on you or you got a glasses prescription that wasn't quite right, you probably could imagine what this experience would be. The great thing is that these are lenses that correct astigmatism and all distances. So as somebody who's a astigmatism and been dependent on glasses all your life, this lens could be a real game changer for you. In the grand majority of cases, things go quite well and people find themselves minimally dependent on glasses, which can be quite the positive change for those who have had a lifetime of astigmatism. Let's talk briefly about some other options that are out there to correct vision at all distances. The first would be the light adjustable lens, which is the newest technology out there where a lens is inserted and after cataract surgery can be adjusted with UV light treatments to fit the patient's particular needs as they experience their vision in the real world. I have a video about that that you can check out because it's pretty remarkable technology. Next, we have accommodating intraocular lens implants that function differently from the multifocal lens implants that have the different distances all in the same lens. The accommodating intraocular lens implant just corrects for one distance, but relies on your eye to focus at different distances more similar to how the eye functioned earlier on before you started wearing a bifocal or using reading glasses. Whereas this one doesn't have as much of an issue with distance vision with the potential glare or halos because it doesn't have those different uh, focal points within the same lens. Uh, it does have a bit of a downside that it doesn't tend to correct as sharply for those really near distances. Extended depth of focus lenses work differently from multifocal intraocular lenses because whereas multifocal intraocular lenses have multiple focal points within the same lens, the extended depth of focus has one elongated focal point with the goal of reducing glare and halos. However, studies are showing similar reports between both lenses in regards to glare and halos, and they also function pretty comparably when it comes to uncorrected distance and intermediate vision. However, the multifocal intraocular lenses tended to function a little bit better at near than the extended depth of focus option. Monovision, which I've alluded to earlier on in the video, is another way to correct vision at multiple distances, but in this case, having one eye that corrects for distance and the other eye for near, whereas these are singular focal points in each of the eyes, so there's not that risk of glare or halos, there is reduced depth perception because neither eye is looking at the exact same distance as the other at any given point in time, uh, but some people do quite well with these, especially if they naturally have a symmetry between the eyes or they're used to wearing contact lenses that are monovision. Uh, this is a viable option. Then there's always the mixed modality, which is not always the go-to. Uh, this would be, for example, like having a monofocal for distance in one eye and then a multifocal in the other eye. There are certainly reasons for this. One of them simply being that multifocal lenses haven't been around for that long. So if you had a cataract at a young age in one eye and already had that removed and replaced with a monofocal lens, it still is an option to get a multifocal lens in the other eye. It may not give as great of a range because they do tend to work better when they are in both eyes and working together, but um, doing this mixed modality is an option for some. It's all about what's going to be right for you. I encourage you to talk to your eye doctor about your vision goals and I wish you the very best. To learn more about that light adjustable lens we were talking about, go ahead and click here. And to learn all about cataract surgery, pre-surgery, post-surgery, lens options, what you could expect years after cataract surgery, all of that information is in this playlist here. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again.